we're going to dive right in. And the topic for today, the discussion topic, is going to be MER, Media Efficiency Ratio. And what MER is, Media Efficiency Ratio, is think of it like company ROAS. So all cash spend out on paid media versus all revenue in. The reason why this is important is because you're going to have multiple ways that a person is going to convert post the first click. But the first part is where did that first click come from? That is scalable, that's trackable, that's measurable, and that can also have an initial ad spend dumped into it. A lot of times Google ads agencies fall too much into brand. They say, well, brand's got the best ROAS and ROAS must be a great measurement. So I'm going to focus on ROAS and I see 100% ROAS on my, on my campaign. So everything must be working fine. What they're seeing is only scratching the surface. Um, of what is actually going on. So <clears throat> when you run only brand, you're capturing the last step of the sequence or sometimes the re-step in the sequence. What I mean by that is your existing customers. Existing customers will purchase from you by Google your brand name, clicking on the first thing that they see, and then going buying again. Now that's not acquiring a new customer, but your mer looks decent. However, it's in the wrong audience. So we're going to be talking about the audience selection, mer the difference between CAC and LTV versus ROAS. And we're going to do the proper way to identify what's actually working, how you can scale it, and what is actually delivering you a solid return. Now, this works a little bit better when you actually have a campaign uh, or when you're running Google Ads just by itself. It's a lot easier to understand. So I have a um, example that I'm going to share today of just a company that has been running only Google Ads for a few years just with us. <clears throat> we're going to identify the actual CPA, we're going to identify the actual MER, and we're going to identify what Google Ads says versus what happens in reality. And we're going to be able to restructure what we believe was our target to what our new target can be. So hopefully you all take away um, kind of a different way to think about Google Ads and your different ways to think about audience, different way to think about automated processes that Google has put in place when focusing specifically on conversion value, because that's not a good indicator of success. Conversion value or ROAS is simply an indicator that a purchase took place and it cost this X. But it, was it new? We're not sure. Was it repeat? Don't know. Was it an existing customer? Uh, or was it remarketing? We, we don't know. What do they first find out about you through Facebook? Not sure. We're going to identify top conversion paths and where you should put the ad spend and in what channels so that you're not falling into the, well, my ROAS looks good, but my new customers keep declining. How is that happening? <clears throat> and we're going to discuss different ways that that can be easily identified. So here's what we're going to be starting off with here is I'm going to go ahead and share screen and I'm going to come up or I'm going to grab this campaign here. Now this campaign, uh, is running a performance max, a dynamic search ad, another performance max and different group procs and a standard shopping campaign that was just launched. And what we can see is in the last 30 days, oh, and, and by the way, we have a 25 to $30 CPA goal. That's what we want to spend in a cost per conversion. Now, sometimes we hit it, sometimes we don't. This is more of a Black Friday. Um, so we're a little bit above goal right now, but it's okay because here's where we can kind of identify what's going on. We know that we've spent 18,000. And if we made 180,000 in conversion value for a close to a thousand ROAS, and we have 551 sales. Now I'm using the Google ads conversion tracking, which typically Google ads conversion tracking is actually fairly accurate. It's not coming from the website uh, or it's not coming from the conversion source of analytics It's coming from the website. We're using tag tag is supposed to be very, very good at identifying uh, post click 90 days. But what we found is that with iOS 14, with more privacy issues and more kind of um, disruptors in the technical uh, ecosphere, we find that Google is actually tracking less and less and less conversions. That's okay, but it also means that the way you measure must be different. So we have to look at this. If we're looking at 18,000 and 180 in the last 30 days, let's just look at all of the analytics and what has been attributed to all of the uh, to all the uh, revenue. So we know that in the last 30 days, we've actually made 335,000. Now that's interesting. 335,000 is much bigger than the 180,000. Well, yeah, it says, you know, organic search made 76,000. We have direct made 78,000. We have 138 that's attributed to paid search. So it looks you know, a little bit less than what Google Ads tracks. That's okay. But here's the interesting part is analytics, which is a last click same day attributed network showing 138,000 and we're showing 180 here. That's fine because people that come back directly you know, we're going to see that people that come back organically, we're going to see that. But what was really interesting 
is this may be uh, the last click, but there also is people coming in organic search. There's also people coming back directly. There are also people coming back through email. Uh, they change devices, they change IP addresses, they change Wi-Fi connections. They start their laptop um, at Starbucks, they go home and they finish on the computer at, at their home. There's many different ways that we are going to lose a person throughout the conversion journey. So let's look at MER then. So let's not focus on ROAS. ROAS says we have you know, 995. However, we already know that there's more transactions coming through here and here. And this is what I mean. Look at what they call the model comparison tool. <clears throat> this is a simplistic way to kind of prove a situation is actually taking place. The first interaction and the last interaction in your model comparison tool in UA. Now, GA4 is going to have something similar. It's not working right now. It's a little bit broken, but it's a good way for us to identify, hey, what it may actually be working right now. So we can see here, now spend is not actually pulling through. That's okay. It's for some reason, uh, UA and, and Google Ads are not, are not speaking properly right now for some reason. But long story short, what we can see is that just inside of the analytics, the first interaction to the site that was coming from paid search was responsible for 434 conversions. The last interaction is 245. Now this is outside of you know UTM tracking. This is and and what the Google Ads tag is showing. This is a different method of attribution. But we know we're losing 43.55 percent of all of our conversions that come in through Pacers through other different channels. Some are referral, some are using social, some are coming back organically, some are coming back directly. And the way that you can kind of prove this is looking at what they call the top conversion path. Again, you don't need Nordbeam to identify what's going on. You would need Nordbeam if you want this number to match up pretty well. But what we can see here is that the people that choose one path length are 376. But the people that choose more than one path length is 1,000. So there's almost three times, or actually more than three times, the amount of people that take more than one path before they convert. That is going to be the first indicator that you're losing some conversions inside of both your Google Ads and Google Analytics. Uh, from the original source. The next thing you want to look at is if you look at all of the conversion paths, for example, and you go down here and you type in paid, <clears throat> this in the last 30 days is going to show that there is a lot of conversions here that are coming through other sources. So people that click on a paid ad and go directly, that's the second most used path. And that is 34,561. Paid search to two directs, that's 25, uh, 25 conversions at 7,000. So you can see that there's a lot of paid search, obviously, is the first section. And that's what we're trying to drive as much, most amount of cold traffic as possible. When you see this here and you see the paid search is most often number one, direct is most often number two. And then, you know, you kind of lose them between, you know, sometimes organic or you, know, you have another direct or you have another paid, but you do see that there's a lot of people that come back directly. Now, what this means, though, is that the direct conversions that happened initially, and let's go back to the model comparison tool, the direct conversions that happened initially are not usually direct conversions that started from the first interaction. There's very little way. And everyone, I would believe if you kind of take a, take off your, your, you know, potentially just Google ads hat and just think of, you know, just think about normal day-to-day -day life of a person that's shopping, very little time do you just think of a website, type it in directly into your browser, and then go by. Uh, that doesn't happen. Normally, if you haven't been to that website, you type in the name of the company, you come through organically. So why are we having 334 first-time transactions in direct? Well, these are just the people that we cannot see. Google cannot identify them. They say, we don't know where they originally came from. They somehow typed in the URL of the company perfectly and clicked enter in the URL bar, visited from the first time ever, and then converted. Oh, and by the way, those people that have never been to our website before that just found us directly by typing in our website perfectly, they uh, are 15,000 users, 15,434 are new. Now, that's not true. This is new just in the window that you're looking at. So the last 30 days, these people are quote unquote new, but they're also new 30 days ago and they were also new 60 days ago. So these are the, the repeat per people. And those people have the best or one of the best conversion rates when you're talking about not email and, and referral. So <laughs> our direct has a better conversion rate that are paid, has a better conversion rate that are organic, and they're also new, and there's just 272 people that just found us out of, you know, just sheer luck, and that happens for years. So we know that cannot be the case. Google Ads misses these 
Google Analytics misses these. These are people that come back to the site where Google cannot string along a previous visit. And I know this is the case because we've only been running Google Ads, even not even, not even social traffic for, for many, many years. <clears throat> so that brings us to MER. So how do you calculate MER? Now, what are we talking about? We talk about MER. Well, let's go back to the actual ad spend here. We know there's 18,140. So let's do this. Let's pull out a calculator. And we have 18,140. Okay, now let's pull out another calculator here. And that's actually taken the revenue. So 335162. So this is MER is all of your revenue divided by all of your spend. So 335162. So this is divided by three, uh, sorry, 18140. Uh, and we have an 1847 MER. That's actually the company ROAS. Google Ads is giving us a thousand, but everything that it can track all adds up to an additional 847. Well, that's a big difference. That's a that's a very large difference. So you say, well, John, some of those you know are organic. Yes, absolutely. But there also is people that are clicking on Google Ads and then coming back organically. There's also people that visit organically by typing in the brand name that they that Google can't track how they even found out about us. So Mer is a really good way to identify what the all cash in, all cash out model is because theoretically, if you were to increase this 18140 spend, you should equal a higher uh, a higher uh, revenue. So just remember that 1840. Now here's what's interesting is when you kind of go back to April or sorry to January 1st, we've kept everything pretty pretty safe this year. If we look at January 1st to December 29th compared to the previous period, and we hit apply on all the channels here. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I don't know why that did 2021. Sorry, I meant to do 2020. Uh, there we go. There we go. Compared to the previous period. 3% more users. 3% more revenue. It's almost identical. 3.24, 3.34. And the transactions are up a little bit here. So what does this mean? Well, we've been keeping the same ad spend. And we've been keeping the same, not, not ad spend. We actually spent a little bit more just because ad that spend became a little bit more traffic, but we switched from standard shopping and search to smart shopping to PMAX. doesn't matter. All of it's basically the same thing. That's why I have a very, um, that's why one of the next episodes we're talking about is a standard is, is uh, performance max actually working. And if it's remarketing too much existing users, but here's, what's really interesting is when you switch campaign types, all you're seeing is the reallocation of things. Why did, you know, organic go down 11? Why did pay search go up 42? Then, you know, why did direct stay the same, but also made 22% more sales, but 22% less sales in organic, but 7% more in paid search. So that's a big increase for not a big return. It doesn't matter. All of this is just, you're, you're identifying the different path flow of traffic through all of your individual channels. But the main goal is if your traffic is staying about the same and your revenue is staying about the same, this really doesn't matter too much. There's not a whole lot of actual, um, uh, changes in actual user behavior or ad spend or amount of visitors. It's just the way that Google decides to reallocate it. Here's what I mean. Before last year, we were running a lot of smart shopping. We also ran DSA. We also ran standard shopping. We also ran brand, etc. cetera. Um, th this year we were happy PMAX. Well, PMAX, what PMAX did was take away from your organic search and give it back to itself. So we started robbing from this area and we started giving it back to this area. But the people, because we were running a brand campaign, when they started to to Google search us again, or when they started to search us again in the browser, they'd come back here most often, and they would actually start to convert. So this ad spend here is directly tied to these two areas here. So a 42% increase equals a 23 plus 11%. And then there's some, obviously, other you know, referral, that kind of stuff is, is, is getting more and more revenue. This is actually just from a different payment sequence on the website using different pay apps, take credit for it as referrals are referring our own traffic back to ourselves, And that's where the actual, actual ad spend is going. So don't really pay attention too much to the singular channel because when Google says, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go after your brand name more often and I'm going to scoop up all the people trying to look for you organically. Well, that happens here. And you're like, oh no, my organic, my SEO is going down. No, your SEO is 25% brand and PMAX decided to take it. <clears throat> so that's why MER is important, M-E-R. If I put a little bit more money in, we get a little bit more traffic and we get a little bit more revenue. The worst thing that a paid ads person, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, doesn't matter. Worst thing that can happen to a person, ad, uh, an ads person is you add 50% more ad spend and get very little new traffic, but more repeat traffic. And they make the same amount of sales and you just cut your profitability in half. 
So this is a way to calculate MER. And what's interesting about this is when you look at the all cash in, all cash out model, you can start to identify areas that are actually going to help you move the needle. You'll know that inside of Performance Max, this one here, for example, we just started this one a few months ago, but it has worked really well. But we can look at things like, is there a lot less brand? You know, is there a lot? And, you know, I do have, you know, a non-brand here that has conversions. I do have a non-brand here that conversions. I have a brand here. That's not too bad. Um, but a lot of this is going to be nice, good, cold traffic. So would I, would I kill this campaign? No, I'm just actually going to try to add more of a standard shopping approach to the Performance Max and see if I can start spending on that one. And it is. It's starting to actually spend immediately within the first day. This one's still in its, its bid strategy. There's seven days left from running. I hit my daily budget right off the bat. I'm just seeing if this will run in conjunction with these two here. <clears throat> now, when I say mer, what I mean about mer, mer because we go back to that media efficiency ratio, all the money I put in versus all the money I've been able to take out, what this is going to do is identify areas that that money actually started to show a return. So if I put it into Pmax, you have to identify what Pmax is going to do with it. Is it going to go after new cold traffic? Is it going to go after repeat traffic? Is it like your existing customers? Is it going to go too much remarketing? And if you're only running Google ads, it's going to usually perform the best. If you're running more omni-channel, it's going to look better, but you're going to lose. What I mean by that is you're going to see more users and more revenue attributed to your paid search. But like I showed you in that media mix, you're robbing all of your return traffic, or all of your branded organic traffic that would have come in through other channels. So Google Ads spent more, Google Ads made more money because Google Ads took more credit, then your direct your organic went down, but you spent more, but your your profits the same, or your sorry, your gross profits the same, your net profit is now down because your ad spend increased. So MER means <clears throat> if this is actually a cold traffic campaign and I'm using the majority of my dollars on new users, that means that MER which is that media efficiency ratio, let's just say 18, should stay roughly the same. If I add 30% more ad spend, my MERS should stay the same, about the same. And I should get 30% more revenue. Lately, we've actually been seeing that PMAX does not do that. PMAX, especially when you're running omni-channel, MER dips when you add ad spend to PMAX. Why? <clears throat> well, PMAX has a pushing rope effect. What I mean by that is you are only about 30 to 40% effective at growing new customers for every dollar you put in. So 30 cents to 40 cents of that dollar you put into Pmax is only going to new traffic. Pmax is designed to find ROAS. It's designed to find sales, cheap sales that have high value because maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, either way. Doesn't matter, same thing. Just you're measuring two different sides of the same coin, a sale. So when you're looking at Performance Max, Performance Max uses search, shopping, YouTube, GSP, display, discover, and it also does new existing and, and repeat, or new existing and remarketing traffic. Well, sounds in theory like it's going to be a good thing. You say, okay, well, if I put another dollar in, my MER, my ratio is just stay the same because it'll give me more traffic that's already performing good. No. You put a dollar in and it takes 33 cents of that dollar. It gets a new person who takes 33 cents and remarkets the existing customer hoping that they buy again and takes 33 cents of a person yesterday and saying, are you ready to buy? That is good, theoretically. Where this gets upset is because that 33 cents that went to new cold traffic is going to start to go to your website and start to convert over time. You put a dollar in get 33% of that dollar more return. So now your MER dips. $100 in, $33 of new customer. That's a bad ratio. The reason why this happens though is because of Google's algorithm targeting people that they think are going to buy. Same thing that happened in smart shopping. Was that you put a dollar in and says, okay, this person's been on the website for a week, so hopefully they buy. So I'm going to put another ad or I'm going to show for a branded ad click for that person or I'm going to start to display or market or you know what, even better, I can spend this money all day long on YouTube. <clears throat> and it shows a YouTube ad to them, which you pay per impression. VMAX will find a way to spend. It doesn't mean it's going to spend it right, but it will find a way to spend. It has outbound capabilities. So it can show ads to people that you'll pay for even if they don't like the ad. 
not even clicking on the ad, like YouTube, just saying there's a fail point in there that it will fall into, which is the point of diminishing returns to the additional ad spend that you put in. So when you're talking about, will I, will I see an equal return in PMAX? Most often not. And most often, or, or even more often, no, if you're running omni-channel. Now, what I mean by omni-channel is this, this problem that I'm talking about gets exacerbated when you're running third-party, not third-party, other sources of traffic like Facebook or Instagram. What PMAX can do is it's going to look at all the traffic that's existing on the site and say, hmm, that's my low-hanging fruit right there. Those people have been looking at three or four products. They've been here for the last 18 minutes, and they haven't had them into their cart. And I'm going to start to show up more often for those for th- those people that are there. Well, you put in money into PMAX saying, like, where's all my new traffic? And it says, yeah, we gave you new traffic. Remember, new traffic and analytics, they're new today. Ha-ha. <laughs> And those people are still not buying yet. So you're hitting a point of diminishing returns. Put a dollar in, no some more sales. Put a dollar more, no more sales. Put a dollar more traffic, no more sales. Why? Because you're simply showing up more often to the people that are in their eight-day sales cycle. And no matter how much more money you add in, doesn't mean that those people are going to buy any sooner. People don't make their decision quicker because you added in more ad spend. No one in the history of time says, you know what? I bought that motorcycle. Why? Well, they doubled their budget. <laughs> I had to buy it. I saw the YouTube ad three more times today. Jeez, I better buy that because a row ad is going to hurt. That's not that's not how things work at all. So when you're looking at the conversion path, like we talked about, we're looking at MER. You have to forget everything post the first click initially. Do they come back directly? Yes. They come back organically. Yep. They come back through email. Yeah. Come back referral, uh uh-huh. They come back through social, yes. How do we get more of those? Where do they originally come from? That's where you put your dollar. The top conversion path means one point in time that a person converted. Here is the kicker, though. If we look at, and I'll share a screen here again. If we look at what actually happens, though, here is the top conversion path over a little bit of a longer time period. So let's just say... October, November, December. Let's just use all three months here. There are 565 different paths for 2,994 conversions. So 3,000 conversions over 500 different ways that a person got there. Well, that gets really interesting now because now you're getting into the point where it's, you know, an organic search and then nine additional pay search, and then organic search, and then a three additional pay search, and then one sale. So what's the ROAS on, you know what, let's do this. I'm gonna take a paid uh, take a paid starting point because they kind of lump all of these together. Um, what's the ROAS, and what's the attribution model on you know these group, the people here? Well, you got like a paid search or organic and referral and a paid search and three more directs and then one sale. Okay, so that's one path. All of these paths here are one time in place. People want to say, well, what ad worked the best? Well, was it that ad? Was it that ad? Or was it that ad? Yes. Well, did they come Google search my brand name and did they then come back through a branded campaign or even an RLSA? And did they look for reviews online and then you found us again and you did another paid search and you found us again probably through the brand name because you've already been here one, two, three, four, five, six times and then you made one sale. Myrrh is the only way this really works. You cannot control 560 different paths for only 3,000 sales. What is that? The same path one in six times? That's not very, very frequent. You're trying to scale and 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 go so deep. You're like, well, let's look at the actual, what was the device? It's like, well, are you talking their 13th visit? That device click was okay. Like you're looking, you're, we're looking at one snapshot, a huge amount. We're, we're looking at one tree in the forest and be like, well, why is that tree taller? Well, it's from the nuclear power plant down the street that grew all the trees. <laughs> we're missing everything that's right in front of our faces. And so here's what's really the part that I wanted to take home with all this is when you're calculating MER, media efficiency ratio, you should be able to add in ad spend to a channel that regardless of the return path, you're going to see a return because you're simply going after more of these people, more of the same type of people. I want to share with you a couple other scenarios because I think that this starts to uh, 
starts to give you a good indication as to what starts to happen when you go after really good quality cold traffic and the scalability of it that everyone that's probably or hopefully still watching it. I don't even know if anybody's still watching anymore. <laughs> but this is the important part of this here. I'm going to share with you a campaign type. <clears throat> well, not a campaign type. I'm going to share with you a, a company here. Uh, and I'm going to share with you something that's actually really interesting is this here. Let me just get pulled up on the screen. Okay. So everyone would love to have the time to just say, hey, I'd love to, how do I just add in more ad spend and just get more out? Like each time I increase my, each time I increase my ad spend, my row has dips. I hear it every single day, every single 50 times a day, which is why we're switching off of the, of the Q&A type platform and I'm going into more education and teaching. Um, why when you add in ad spend does ROAS dip? That is a, when you're talking about automated targeting, that's where every person will lose except for Google. They'll win. Google will win. They'll take your money all day long, whether you get interested or not. It doesn't matter. You will lose every time unless you focus on non-branded cold traffic. I have a thousand of these examples. But I'm going to share with you something that's in addition to a, some Pmax campaigns here that I'm running too. What about this one here? <clears throat> Standard shopping. We put in 8,800, got 13,000. Cost of conversion is 109. Okay, fine. But what if I took this $300 and went up to 900? Well, yeah, you 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 know, you, your cost per conversion would go up two bucks. Well, that's interesting. So you mean my ROAS isn't really going to dip? Nope. All right. Well, what about you know my furniture one? This one, yeah, you can go from 50 to 150. Your cost per click will decrease a little bit and have an increase in clicks. It's too soon to find out what the conversion rate is. Okay, fair, fine, fair. Let's talk about some other accounts here that we're starting this with as well. And actually, I'll, I might be able to give you an example. Uh, no, I can't. That's a publicly traded company, so we'll be able to do that one. But this one here, I think, is also really important. When we're talking about uh, the effect that a standard shopping campaign, when run alongside, of even a performance max campaign, you're filling in gaps that performance max is missing and what you can control, what performance max can pick up. So let's do this one here. Um, I'll give you a small uh, small uh, uh, example here. So this one, again, we're, we're crushing with this account. We spent you know 76 grand to make a half million in the last 30 days. Awesome. Well, how about this standard shopping campaign? This one, hey, if I go from $100 a day to $300 a day, my cost per conversion is going to go zero dollars more or zero dollars less. Well, that's interesting because what is this campaign doing? Oh, that campaign? Yeah, you're getting a 348 ROAS. Oh, okay. So a 348% ROAS, as long as I have this campaign in this in a good situation, if I can just add in triple the amount of money, what is my CPA going to go to? Nothing. Your CPA is going to stay the same. As long as they buy roughly the same type of products in that one campaign that's serving only that group of products, you will see a scale. Now, <clears throat> I have a very specific structured way that I do that. Um, very specific T ROAS goals that are a little bit odd in the way that we actually start to set up the negative keywords and stuff like that. But my, my point is, and I can't just, you know, give away our client's secrets because they pay, you know, handsomely for these secrets. But what I'm trying to say is when you hit a point of diminishing returns, the, the key factor is you're letting automated targeting find who it's going to show. Automated targeting will go to the people that it knows it wants to buy. Yes. Good. That works. It's going to go to the people that they know are going to buy. Okay. If you spend more, will they buy sooner? No. So when you increase your ad spend, do they buy more? No. Do they buy it later? Yes. But did you pay more for the same sale? Yes. Did any sales increase? No. Okay. So that's why your row ads dips. 10 people are going to buy in seven days. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's just use that as a fact. 10 people will buy in seven days. Good. What if you doubled your ad spend on those 10 people? Still going to buy in seven days. What did you spend? Two times more. How many more sales did you make? Zero. Same seven. That's why you add an ad spend, your ROAS dips. That's because it's trying to go after the people it knows are going to convert. Fine. So what this means is that when you're using automated targeting, you just simply go to the level that the market dictates. The market's going to dictate how much it's going to spend with you. You're not going to convince you know, Susie, who's dropping her kids off at soccer and has to pick up a dry cleaning and then go pick up her husband at the airport that, hey... You know those, the the leggings you want? I spent double. Where are you at, Susie? Buy now. Doesn't work like that. Everyone, for some reason, believes that you can just, you know, program a person driving their car to pull over and buy because you increase your ad spend. Doesn't work like that. That's what people miss. 
they miss the fact that you're letting Google choose the same five people to show more and more and more and more and more, more ads to. And you're like, why aren't they buying faster? And for some reason, this is lost on everybody. That's why I'm trying to take to Google Ads Live and do this for free by saying, stop. Stop letting Google dictate where it wants to go if you want to scale. Media Mix is your friend. What is PMAX good at doing? PMAX is really good at remarketing. PMAX is really good at getting the right person at the right time and when they're ready to buy. Good. Will PMAX find whole new people? Yes, if you're grossly underspent. No, if you are at a good enough spend without a TROS, without a TCPA, and your your ROAS, your ROAS is good. So this means that if I put $100 to make it $300 in sales, good. If I put $200 to make $320, what happens? You overspend, pull back. Okay. Because this is what the market is going to dictate, that Google has found a market that will buy. Are you going to force more people? No. How do you get more people in there that Google loves to remarket? Grab them from some other source. YouTube, standard shopping, search, DSA, discovery, display. You run those channels. You run those placements. And you dictate that this person has not been on my website. They have not seen an ad on my YouTube channel. They have not Google searched my brand name. They're not one of my customers. Those are excluded. And then you start to slowly crank it up. Think about your time lag. Is a seven-day time lag? Yes. But if that seven-day time lag, you start to increase cold traffic, wait a week, do they start to convert? Aha, are, is PMAX stealing those conversions? Who cares? Murr is the same. You bring in a new person from YouTube and PMAX remarkets them. What is your Murr? The same. You made more cold traffic and more sales. Do they come back directly? Who cares? Murr is the same. Media efficiency ratio. Rachel says, but increase, but isn't increasing the budget letting Google find more people? It depends on if you're choosing the target. If you said, hey, I'd really like the people that on Tuesday search this keyword between 2 o'clock morning and 3 o'clock morning because that's what I want, you get to choose it. If you said, hey, performance max, go ahead and look at this signal. Yes, because they're going to say, ah, I'm ignore that. You have a lot of Facebook traffic. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go there. Why? It's a signal that I get to ignore. If you're choosing the keywords, the placements, the standard shopping, the non-brands, all of the areas that you can control, which all of us here that are good Google Ads managers built our whole education and systems on, when PMAX came in, it was good. It was very good. It found new traffic. I, I, I launched a company for free for a client, and it's a tea infuser, and we 5 x that company in six months just on YouTube because I ignored CPA and I ignored ROAS and I just focused on Murr. We proved it with the post-purchase conversion surveys, but... Well, what the, the moral of that story is, I went on YouTube and said, here's these exact people that I want to be in front of, and I waited. So I got to choose it, and then every two weeks, I increased it 20% in ad spend. There was a small startup. I love the people to death. Um, Gavin and Paul, if you're watching, love you guys. Um, but we we figured out a way that we basically just go after a lot of cold traffic, ignore every other metric but Murr. And, and grow that way because if you have the right message, the right audience at the right time, ignore all of the, here's what's going on. But here's what Google is saying is happening because Google only knows half the story now. We already know that all of your direct traffic that's coming in inbound is not your is not, is not your brand and traffic that woke up one day and said, I wonder if SOL8.com is a thing. It's not. It's, it's, it's fake. So you have to look at where they're coming from before and you have to put your good marketing hat on and find, identify the areas that you're scaling. Is it cold traffic? Yes. Can you crank it up? Yes. Are you able to attribute more sales to that? Who cares? Did your sale, did your spend go up globally? Yes. Did your sales go up globally? Yes. Is your MER increasing? Yes. I'll give you a good example here. <clears throat> There's a company that we did this with recently. And I use Norpine because this is actually really important for everyone to see. And in this company, I'm going to take actually even before Black Friday, even before Cyber Monday, before all that stuff, and I'm going to share with you a really interesting thing that no one is going to be able to, be able to explain here uh, because it's not something that anybody has any idea uh, that happens unless you obsess about the data. Here's what's funny. Before Black Friday and Cyber Monday, when typically it's a slow time because everyone waits, I took 13% more ad spend and created 76% more revenue and 56% more MER, media efficiency ratio, and a $31 less cost for conversion, cost for new customer. And I brought in a 33% new visits and 15% less cost per new visit, all by doing one simple trick, <laughs> turning off PMAX. So here's what's funny, is I went all standard shopping, killed PMAX, went all standard shopping as a test. Now, the ROAS that I was measured to by the client said, hey, you need to have a 3X in Google. I said, okay, 
I give you a 12,000 X if you just let me go after all of your brand name, but you're going to die as a company. Does that sound good? No. So I'm not saying that's how the conversation went, but that's how it was kind of leading to in a conversation. So in our Google ads account, I have a two X. Why? Well, I'm only going after one click brand new, non-branded cold traffic customers. So just people that are Googling, you know, specific keywords about specific type of products and then they're clicking on my ads and then they go to my site and then they leave. And then I say, okay, get another one. I'm not remarketing. Why? The sales cycle was long. People always came back direct. Remember this, the sales cycle was long. People always came back direct. That is a, that is a PMAX nightmare. Why? Well, when the sales cycle is long, Google's going to focus on them for longer. And when they come back directly, or usually which means come back to the brand name, PMAX takes that credit. This thing is not going to scale. So I did, as I said, shut everything off, just do 100% pure cold traffic. And what ended up happening is my spend went up by 20%. And you see, I'm 17,000 of the 20,000. Facebook was doing pretty much just remarketing. But when I started increasing my small amount of ad spend on a standard shopping campaign, my revenue went up exponentially. My MER went up exponentially. My cost per acquired customer went down. And there's no way, if you look at how does 148 and 603 equal a $64 CAC, it's not possible. Those two don't average down to that little. It's from what you can't track, it's what you can't identify. Well, my organic traffic started to go up 140%. My email traffic started to get new signups and started to convert my organic search just from Google itself went up 67%. My YouTube ads started to get more remarketing and that actually made more sales. People started Googling this company named Coupon Code and share sale affiliates started picking it up. And Facebook ads remarketing started to increase. This is all through Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So we take 20% more or 13% more total spend to make 76% more even during Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And then Black Friday, Cyber Monday rolled around and then, you know, everything was, was in land of milk and honey. It was, uh, we hit a thousand X. I still, not, I'm still not at a four X, but somehow we globally went down to a $30 cost per new customer. Why? Learn your top conversion path and what Mer will do when you start to scale cold traffic and you start to pay less for that cold traffic to return. And when you spend even less to pay for that cold traffic to find you in your branded campaign, it means your dollar to get a new customer and a new user, a brand new visitor to your site that wants to buy from you because it's a bottom of the funnel standard shopping campaign. Those people that are going to buy or they're going to not. Even if I spent two, three, four, five dollars after that one dollar click saying, please, 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 they say, nah, I wasted seven dollars on one person where I could have wasted. One dollar, one person got six additional new people for the same exact cost. Very, very simple. Mer, Don, is media efficiency ratio. All cash in, all cash out. It's at the beginning of this recording. It'll be up on YouTube, but it's basically take your company revenue divided by your company ad spend, and that is Mer. Think of ROAS for all of your ad spend because your top conversion paths are going to go through 500 different paths for 3,000 conversions. You'll, you'll be able to watch this. It'll all become very clear. Uh, I'm Right now, I'm not doing any more Q&A. We're going to be doing focused learning. I'm going to teach you guys all this stuff. It's going to be Brilliant. Fantastic. But <clears throat> when we're talking about the the uh, scaling up that cold traffic, MER matters. Why? Well, that campaign spent a whole bunch more money, but the raw still didn't get a three. Now, the, the client won, and we, we 6x to 10x in one month when we couldn't hit 1x before because we let Google identify his target. He says, this person is going to buy, and they may be right, but I don't want to spend $20, $30, $40 on the same person. Spend $2, and I'll, I'll take my chances. When you look through the top conversion path, we're losing 70% of all of our first click paid search traffic to our direct channel coming back. I have a 70% chance that this person's going to come back and buy. Shit. I'm not spending any more money on them. I'll take my chances. It's a great chance. If this person comes back and buy, I'm not going to just hit them with you know more and more and more display ads on CNN.com and say, man, hope this really convinces you. Those people already made their decision. We're in an instant gratification. We're in an Amazon age now. You look at Amazon age or you look at Amazon ad or a product and you're like, yeah, I'm either going to buy that now or I'm going to wait. You might get remarketed too, but unless you see something that is outside of Google, like your favorite influencer doing an hour long episode on it, you may pick up more sales, but that's not what the, it's not within the realm of Google unless you want to do any, um, unless you want to do a, a you know, YouTube campaign with influencers. But here's the lessons and the takeaways. MER, media efficiency ratio. What was your overall revenue of your company divided by the overall ad spend of all of your channels? That will give you a MER, media efficiency ratio. How efficient is your media? If you are use, utilizing 80 to 90% of cold traffic, you will be able to scale that campaign until you hit a point of diminishing returns, which is simply just maxing out your search press share and or click share. So you're pretty much maxed out and then you have to think about something else. But my, my philosophy, my 
my typical use case is you can spend two, three, four million dollars a month before you hit that point of diminishing returns. You're in a real good standing. So when you think about MER, it's company ROAS ratio. Do you want to spend more for the existing users? Ratio is going to go down. Do you want to spend the same amount of money on these new people to bring them to the site? MER stays the same. Volume goes up. And that's what MER is. And that's how you need to calculate everything. If you look at the difference between CAC and LTV, that's actually what we're going to be doing next week. I'll, I'll, I'll stay that for next week because right now I just want to have MER. We're going to do CAC and LTV. We're going to do the fail points of automated targeting by audience definitions. We're going to have a whole lot of fun here. It's going to be it's going to be like the good old days. But these Friday lives are going to be, um, you know, Cosm going to be joining, I think, next week. And we're going to have kind of a podcast episode where we beat up models. But uh, anything that is, um, anything that, that you all have learned so far that you have questions about, I want to keep it very tied to this topic. I, I can't answer questions about other, uh, other scenarios. So I want to keep this video very, like, training-esque version. But any questions on MER so far? Um, Moral of the story is people are going to come back and buy in different ways that they already would like to buy. And there are, they're also going to go through your omni-channel performance. What your new traffic inside of Google will be remarketed to inside of your Facebook. It's okay. Facebook's usually a fairly inexpensive remarketing campaign. Don't spend too much money on remarketing globally. That's a good lesson to take home just no matter what, what network you're on. But scaling cold traffic wins. We had a client that we actually moved off of Pmax, and it cost us one third to make the same amount of sales. Now ROAS is lower, but we went from twenty hundred average new cl- customers a week to sixty five hundred new customers a week with about one hundred forty percent more. So we tripled our new customer growth with one hundred forty percent new ad spend because both Facebook, Instagram, uh, and I say Facebook, Instagram, both so they, Facebook, Instagram, and Google went just pure cold traffic rather than beating up on their existing customers and too much brand. We really started moving it along. So yeah. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys took all, uh, took something away home from this. I think this is, this is a really, really, really good use case for everyone to kind of wrap their heads around and think about, okay, if I can look at cold traffic, ignore Google ROAS and start to look at company Mer because these people sometimes come back through email campaigns and they send it to their friends by hitting the right group of audience that starts to scale and it's not too much of my existing customers and not too much existing traffic, then you can start to see a good a good scale up. Um, oh, we got some some questions, I think. Uh, in that case, what bidding strategy would you use on standard shopping? I like either manual CPC, maximize clicks if I have a really good feed, or even a low T ROAS. Those are those are the areas. My primary one is a low T ROAS. My secondary one is manual CPC. And my third one is maximized clicks, but that's a very specific use case. Um, low T ROAS, like, you know, just something that is not going to hinder spend too much, um, but allow it to have a slight learning uh, strategy about itself. I uh, mean, that it's just going to stop going after the high spend relevant uh, keywords if they don't actually make any sales. So it's a good way to kind of have a an automated negated keyword tool built into it. Uh, how do you use MER to identify what new campaigns to introduce or where to scale? Perfect. Uh, this one is actually uh, first indication is um, if I look at a non-brand cold traffic campaign and I look at my ROAS or my CPA there, um, you have to actually look at, uh, sorry, if you have to, you have to ignore the ROAS and look at the CPA there. So for example, MER is a good way to identify AOV divided by cost per new customer. And then you have to know what is the difference between people that are coming through paid traffic and then lost to other channels. I'll give you a really, really fun example. Let me, uh, let me share screen and I'm just going to do a big, um, a big notepad here. And I'll give you a really good example. Here's how, here's a great way to calculate MER. Let me uh, increase the font size here. Um, oh, there is, I don't really use it so much. Okay, perfect. So, your all revenue last 30 days equals, let's say, $100,000. Okay. All spend in Google Ads, let's just say you're only using Google Ads right now, is 25, I can't type people, $25,000. So, and but then uh, Google conversion value so it shows, let's say, 50000 This is important because Mer 
is 100,000 that just took place, period. We have 100,000, fine. 50,000 of that, though, Google took credit for it. Good. Is it actually 100? Could be. Is it 90? Possibly. It's somewhere in between 50 and 100. We know that because Google's not tracking everything. So just know that Google Ads conversion tracking is tracking 50,000. So our MER, which is rev divided by spend, equals 400%. Because we made 100,000, we spent 25. All cash into my company. Well, some of that was email. Sure. Where'd those people come from? Oh, yeah, Google. Ha! So we have to, that's what I'm saying. We have to look at this thing in a very, very specific vacuum. All of the revenue that comes in divided by all the spend. Because you can last click attribute them from where they came from. But if you're only advertising on Google, obviously it has to come from there. But Google won't track all of that. Sometimes it's 60, sometimes 70, sometimes it's 30, just depending on a long sales cycle. Or if using analytics as a converted tracking source. So this is Mer right here. Mer is 400%. Okay, now we have to look at is what campaigns are non-brand, bold traffic keywords, non-existing website visitors, and non-customers. Uh, not customers. This is the questions that you have to ask. So things like a non-brand standard shopping or a non-brand search or a DSA that doesn't really have too much brand. Pmax, no, can't use Pmax. Pmax is not good because it dynamically remarks people that are existing on your website for even organic. It's going to take credit for it. That's not cold traffic. You can you have to go with what you can control. Now, the problem is is those campaigns are usually about a 100% ROAS or you know uh, a 200% ROAS. That's okay. That singular click, non-brand cold traffic versus visit, fine, whatever. What this means though, is if you have a seven day conversion lag, seven day conversion lag, that, oh, lag, that means that your brand is gonna look, you know, that's gonna look very happy. <laughs> Where'd it come from? Well, your non-brand cold traffic campaign, that's how they found out about you. Well, what is what is the, these campaigns here? If they're at one hundred to two hundred percent, let's just say it's a uh, it's is two hundred percent. So two hundred percent ROAS, but not physically, but just a big but. The CPA is forty five dollars, and ROAS is seven hundred percent. Your CPA is seven. Why? There's a returning traffic from this campaign right here. The people that find out about you for the first time, Google a brand name. Now, what's the no? What's the combination between the two of those? Four hundred percent. Ah, it is four hundred percent. You know why? That's my mer. Now it's starting to make sense, right? Okay, so now if we know that this campaign here that is two hundred percent ROAS and has a CPA of of forty five dollars, what if we? Uh, let's got a little crazy. What if we added? I don't know. Let's say. 30% more ad spend to it. Hmm. We well, have yeah, 30% more ad spend to it. ROAS does not move. CPA does not move. Okay, so that's good. So why are you scaling a campaign that only has a 200% ROAS? We're going to lose money. Well, because after I added my 30% ROAS to it, all my revenue in the last 30 days, after doing this for, let's say, two months, Went from 130. And all my spend here moved up to, what is this, like 35? I don't know. 40? 45? I don't know. That's just like bad at math. <laughs> but your your MER stays about the same. But now you're starting to scale. Because you're taking a campaign that doesn't have that great of metrics. But it is brand new cold traffic, not customers not existing, and putting more ad spend to it. So when you use MER to identify with new campaigns, you're measuring a point in time and you're taking the campaign that has the highest chance of increasing just pure new brand new cold traffic to you and saying, if this stays about the same and my CPA stays about the same, does my overall revenue go up? And uh, and TJ, um, if that is the case here, you should have a campaign that looks like this. Well, if I just go for $100 up to $300, does my CPA increase or decrease? Nope. Ah, so my mer will stay the same. Well, that campaign, yeah. Are you profitable? Yeah. Welcome to higher volumes. <laughs> TJ, does that make sense? <laughs>
Uh, cool. Uh, so long story short, PMAX is used for marketing audience from other sources. No, it's not necessarily. What PMAX is really, really, really good at is finding a group of people that it knows will buy. Spend up to a point of diminishing returns, hang tight. It's not going to be pushed to find more traffic. It'll be pushed to remarket. But if those people don't buy any faster, fine. As you take in a if you take in PMAX and you say, okay, if you hit $100 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day, $400 a day. My ROAS went from 300%, 300%, 300%, 200%. Okay, back down from $400 down to $300 a day. My ROAS goes from 200% up to 300%. Lock it in there. Don't use a TCP. Don't use a few ROAS. That is going to remain there for a long time. You've said, Google, how many people do you know next week that'll buy this can of almonds? So it's here. Is it? I'm like, okay, can you find more? Nope. I'm not built to find more. Why? I'm built to convert. Why aren't you going to find more people? I don't know if those people are going to convert. I know these people will convert. That's what PMAX does. So it's very good up to a point that you have to stop it. And then you look at other channels to push. Even if the metrics look bad, focus on your MER. That will be the design factor if you scale the right traffic. <clears throat> oh, uh, this becomes increasingly more valuable for store has returning visitors. Returning sales, I mean LTV to the moon. Well, I'm very, 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 very glad you said that. Uh, I'm going to have some fun with you real quick, and I'm going to show you a really quick snapshot. Um, I'm going to change the, the name of this. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so check this out, TJ. When you do this for one or two years, for example, you get to a point where... I was going to take like the last seven days for fun. I changed the name of this company to no, so no one can see it. But my media efficiency ratio, my MER is now 26. It's been 165 grand last week to make 4.38 million. This isn't just like some, oh my gosh, it's amazing. No, this company was up and running for 20 years. It's been growing now a lot more. We went from 21,000 new customers to 65,000 new customers per quarter in a year by following this. So when you look at your cost of acquiring a customer down under 40%, my Google Ads campaign right now is running at a 6X. I don't really care. I could care less what the what the MER is. My cost per acquired new customer went down. Why? This is a company that sells medication to animals. Well, people that buy medication for animals buy all the time. They have their LTV is like 3, 6, 9, 12 orders per year. I'll pay for them one time, let them come back, and just increase my revenue because my cost per conversion is so low. I'm going to get a whole bunch of new customers every single week that I don't have to pay for ever again and my MER skyrockets to the moon. So exactly, when you have good LTV. That's uh, TJ, you're jumping ahead too. Actually, join us next week. We're going to do CAC versus LTV. Cost of acquiring a new customer versus the lifetime value of the customer. How do you pay for that customer less? Imagine this. Here's a great one, TJ. If you had a CAC and LTV model, what is the cost per acquired new customer for the first sale? Well, if I'm 100%, it costs me $50 to make $50. Good. Now, are you running a brand campaign? Yeah, it's got a great return. I'm sure it is. What's your brand's cost per conversion? $20. Awesome. So the $50 you made the first time and you paid $50 for, that person come back and spent another $50. And you didn't pay anything, right? It's your customer. No, I spent another $20 on it. Well, there goes your profit margin. Now do that for a few years. <laughs> and your brand campaign eats away at all your profit but has a good ROAS. Uh, and that's where people fall into it. You look at ROAS and think, well, that must be good. Nope, you just take all that cost per conversion, every single one of your brand conversions, just chuck out the window. Why? Because it's like, I don't know, the 17th conversion that person did with us this this year um, or this decade. So yeah, you, you simply just hack off all of your profitability to have a good ROAS. Google wins, you lose. But hey, ROAS looks fine, right? Who cares? Uh, I mean, doesn't PMAX go into more audience signals when we bump up spend? Nope. Nope. What it does is it first exhausts all the available lowest hanging fruit, especially for any TCP or T ROAS on PMAX. Why? It says, hey, I need to maximize the conversions. Well, what's going on? Well, I need to maximize conversions. Where am I going to go? To, to Bob, who is Googling a, a keyword? No, that, that doesn't seem right. But Ted just put a put an item in his cart. Mary has visited 13 times today. <laughs> I'm going to those two people. Well, here's more Aspen. Great. I'm going to go after them harder. That's what happens. And when, I mean, if you try to scale PMAX and you found a time where you couldn't scale, 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 scale to the moon, your click share is only 12%, but your ROAS keeps dipping while you keep adding in more Aspen, is trying to remarket too hard. 
TJ says, so interesting. I'm trying to use dynamic search to increase new customers that use Pmax for targeting. It makes knowing how the campaigns function at each level of the funnel more important. So good. You're exactly right. Just know that this, though, you don't have to necessarily scale Pmax, actually. I'd actually hang tight on Pmax, just scale DSA. Why? Pmax will use more and more and more of its ad spend to do more remarketing on all those seven channels, and that campaign will simply become more efficient with the more cold traffic that you have. So don't scale Pmax because then it's going to go off on its own plus remarket yours at the same time. Uh, 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 Andrew says, how do you determine when to kill lower brand campaigns since you can be paying for returning customers who would have converted anyway? I spend the least amount as humanly possible in order to capture a branded conversion that I was going to get that sale anyway because it's very easy to to make that sale. So here's what here's a good, good method. Um, when you're running... Heavy cold traffic, run very little, um, very little uh, brand traffic. Now, I'll give you a scenario that's been true since the dawn of time and history of mankind. But you know, look at this uh, screen here. In the last July, August, I mean, it's it, this campaign runs very well. Like there's, there's, I mean, conversions spike up here because it's running PMAX, so I didn't have to spike up spend. That's going to happen anyway. Emerges and then go back down because again, PMAX just does have your marketing. They run a lot of Facebook ads. Everyone's happy in this scenario. Our CAC looks great. But um, if you look at the brand campaign, I spent $769 to make $133,000. My cost per conversion is 60 cents. Would you pay 60 cents for a branded conversion? Yeah. Well, why is it 60 cents? Well, my insights tab, or I'm sorry, my auction insights tab here. So, so I'm the only one there. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that's why it's so low. Of course, John, of course your branded campaign is going to be low. Um, there's no one there, and that's all I'll spend on. Another person comes in and starts to bid up a little bit. I bid five pennies over him and or her, and I just hang tight. I will not spend more than what it needs to protect myself because I'm not measuring ROAS in Google. I could care less. It's a snapshot in time. I look at CAC versus LTV and MER but I need to protect myself from all the investments I'm making in the cold traffic. Because if I get three clicks on three brand new people that are semi-interested and then they come back and Google my brand name because they're ready to buy, but they've only been there once or twice before and they don't remember my name, I lost that money. So I'll protect myself to get the return traffic I paid for and I earned. But I'm not going to just crank it up even though the ROAS looks like it's a million percent. It doesn't matter. Cool. That was fun, everyone. Uh, let me know. I know there's like only 21 people here. Um, I'm going to try to do some Q&A at the end. It should be a very topic discussion, but uh, let me know if everyone had a good time. Uh, I had a blast. I've been speaking for 58 minutes now and, uh, yeah, it's a good topic. I love this stuff. Uh, so that's a good, um, way to think about how Google ads actually affects your business. Um, thank you, Andrea. And then, uh, I mean, uh, have you found a way to see what channels are hidden in the direct traffic source? Uh, direct traffic is simply just someone going to the browser and typing in your URL directly and clicking enter. It's, it normally is returned. The reason is, is because if you ever gone to Google, you open up a new tab and you type in G-O, it's like, oh, you want to go to Google? And you're like, yep, that's direct visit. Usually it's return. Um, so uh, Sergey says, best Friday ever. I see you John. Great time. Happy New Year, man. Woo! It's the best one so far. Good. I'm so glad you guys like this. Uh, it's going to be just knowledge bombs. Uh, that are just gonna be flying out of solutions eight, and you're gonna you're gonna start to think and learn like I do. So it's cool stuff, everyone. Uh, I appreciate it, and happy new year, everyone. I will see you.